pretty soon. Or if there are enterprises, they're using a lot of data. We have seen companies which are doing autonomous driving. There are companies which are trying to build new drug discovery models using AI. In all of them, the common factor is AI. So what I'm going to share with you today is very briefly, how do customers manage this data easily? And in case you're wondering, usually managing is about security cost and operational insights. In most cases, customers we have seen, the data lands in an object storage, like for us, Google Cloud Storage, because it's cheap, easy, pay-as-you-go, scales almost infinitely. But in all the cases, when you have billions of those objects, petabytes of data, there's something different about management. The usual standard way of management actually just doesn't work. And the reason is, when you have billions of objects, thousands of buckets, tens of projects, and hundreds of developers, like the multiple AI apps being built, all being managed by a few infra or storage admins, it doesn't work. What customers have traditionally tried to do is export all my metadata for these billions of objects, put that in an analytics engine like BigQuery for us, uh, and then try to run queries and develop automation. And if you find some great insights, go and build scripts to go and take action on that. Some of these are like, for example, if there are any pictures with you know, kids or humans, maybe they should not be used for AI training, or at least you have lineage and governance, or make sure nothing is inadvertently open to public internet. That's where you see some of the you know, worst kind of security scenarios happen for companies. How do you do at this billions of objects scale is the problem we are trying to solve. So our take on this is for managing storage at scale, Essentially, there are two parts to this exercise. One is analyzing your storage state. How do you look at the state, again at that scale, and come up with some new insights about what actions you need to take? Once you have found those insights, how do you take those actions? Again, remember, you may have 10,000 objects where you need to go change an access control policy, or you need to, for example, change the encryption key. It's not easy to do that at that scale without writing scripts, trial, errors, something fails, let's go back, fix which of them. How do you make all that easy? So essentially, for us, the management solution is analyze your storage state and then take actions, and both of them at that scale of billions of objects. Now, what if this analysis can be done in a few minutes with no special expertise? So far, what we had seen traditionally with customers it requires a couple of analysts, a couple of engineers, harvest the metadata, build all of that. What if we can get out of that? And that's where we introduced two very interesting capabilities at Cloud Next, and what I'll touch next. So we introduced the first feature, which is called Insights Data Set. What we essentially do is we take all the metadata across these billions of objects, thousands of buckets, bring that through a pipeline, and put that in BigQuery, our analytics, uh, a great analytics offering for analysis. And once the data is available there, it's a daily snapshot. So think every day we give you, in some cases we have seen, you know, tens of billions, hundreds of billion object metadata. When was this object created? Who created it? When was, you know, let's say what are some of the object locks applied, bucket lock applied, all this metadata delivered to you in daily snapshot including custom metadata which the customers may have created. Maybe somebody is running a model, uh, model training, model building, and they put special tags on certain data, use this, don't use this, version X, version Y, all of that is also available. And literally with a few simple clicks, customers can set it up across hundreds of projects in Google Cloud, which again, if you've heard from some actual practitioners, it takes effort and time, it's not really easy. Once the data lands in BigQuery, BigQuery has a lot of powerful tools and interfaces, BigQuery itself, look at dashboards, and essentially they can use these tools to run these analysis and query. But we did something else beyond on top of that, and you know, maybe to your previous question, how are we using our own AI application internally? So we are offering another capability called Generate Insights with Gemini. All this metadata, and I'm gonna show you a demo because nothing is better than seeing it in action. All this metadata, use Gemini and natural language interface to query that. There's no need to have analysts or wait on analysts, build queries, build dashboards, do it in real time on your own. Even a storage user can do it. 
<clears throat> and this is how you shift some of this management left rather than having all the management being concentrated in a few infra admins, storage admins and all of that. Let's shift a little bit left, more to the users so they take more of it. And then, as we all know, AI is still kind of evolving. So we have done a few things to make it better and easier. For example, verified answer for top question. There are a few questions we keep hearing from our customers again and again. So we made sure that those are verified answers, completely there, no hallucination, so that you, the customers can accurately trust. And then they can do deep dive analysis. I can start with one, ask a second question, third question, do my own custom analysis, and you know generate on-demand graphs. So this is what this capability is, and I'm going to show that piece of it to you uh, about it. Again, this is primarily for storage admins, storage users. They could be AI model builder companies, which have a huge state of data. These could be enterprises, which are bringing on a lot of data to create this new AI application. So with that, let me shift. Okay. So this is the Google Cloud interface, you know, the, the, the usual left side menu. And if I go to cloud storage, our object storage service, our, uh, I have a capability here called storage insights. I go over there, and this is where my page shows up. So remember I talked to you about data sets. Right on the top, I basically select data sets. Why multiple? Because of data residency reasons. Some customers may say, hey, all of my US or North America metadata will stay in North America. Everything in Asia pack will stay there. Europe will stay there. So that's the reason why customers do it. Now, let me select one which has got some interesting data to show to you. So this is a data set which is you know, working across, in this case, 21 projects with some 10 terabytes of data. And uh, it gives you some interesting numbers about how many objects are there, projects are there. All this is generated using AI LLM models from that metadata available there. And then right below, we have some of these pre-created queries for customers to run down. Divided into three categories, usage and savings, very big thing for many customers, uh, security and compliance, and then data discovery. For example, let's click a little bit on security and compliance. How many of my buckets are there where public access prevention is enforced or not enforced? This is again one of the most common worries for administrators for storage. Let's not leave anything open by mistake. Very easy to come, check it out from here. Now, let me try one of them. So I want to store a size, I want to break down the region. Again, this looks like a simple question, but trust me, not easy to do. When you have billions of objects across 10 different you know, regions, if you have to do it today, you have to basically run queries and API calls on all of them. And of course, you have to pay a lot and then munch all that data and do it here. I select this query and essentially run it. It takes its time and comes up with this you know, beautiful graph with all the details showing me a good representation. And we have put a few indicators about when the data was last refreshed so that they know it's as of a certain date and point in the time. Now, let me do something more interesting rather than pick from one of these existing queries. I'm going to okay. I'm going to make a more interesting one. So which buckets have objects with JPG in name and are outside of US Central 1 region? So why is this interesting? I have a lot of media files and I want to make sure my this training data is co-located with my GPUs. GPUs are pretty expensive. I don't want to move data all along everywhere. So let me run this and figure out what's going on. And it will do its work and come back with a response. And here we are, the name of the buckets. And for the query, we also show the exact query which was run over here. And this is what is generated by the AI. Like this is a query. So if the user wants to go and run this directly in BigQuery, they can run on their own. This can also be a great starting point for them to do some very other complex you know, analysis over there. 
look at some of the smartness and intelligence here. There's a query, but we also say, hey, everything which is not like US Central 1 and also not like in US NAM4. What are these two? These indicate our multi-region buckets. Again, this is something a very distinguishing, differentiating, and wonderful characteristic of Google Cloud Storage will allow these multi-region buckets where customers don't have to worry about data being replicated and all, and we take care. So all that is taken care. So this is again essentially very briefly uh, what this capability does. I will go back and kind of just one last slide and I'm gonna finish with that. We went through that demo. So essentially this capability I talked to you about storage inside generation allows power users like analyst as a great point to start. It's like a cold start problem solution, but if there's storage users, they can do it pretty easily available through Gemini Cloud Assist and currently in experimental release. So that's about it. I think the last message, you know, I'll leave that with, sorry, this is a video, I don't need that. We have built a couple of pretty interesting and innovative capabilities to help customers manage scale. Again, in AI context, it's a lot about data and there's a lot of data. So if customers can't manage, can't keep it safe, secure, compliant, it's, it's gonna be very difficult for them to scale in their AI application. And that's what we're trying to solve here with these capabilities.